Hello students, welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Dr. Pooja from Punjab Technical University, Kapoorthala, Punjab. Today, we are going to talk on the module Motivation Content Theories from the paper Organizational Behavior. Students, after completing this module, you will be able to understand the concept of motivation, describe the importance of motivation in an organizational context. Comprehend the content theories of motivation. Critically evaluate advantages and disadvantages of various content theories of motivation. First of all, let us understand the concept of motivation. Performance of every individual depends upon his or her ability to do work and level of motivation. In other words, we can say that both of these factors largely influence efficiency of individuals. Without motivation, performance of even a highly competent employee will be very low. It also means that motivation is an utmost important factor that encourages individuals to give their best efforts and reach to their personal as well as organizational goals. A strong positive motivation will always facilitate an employee to increase his abilities, performance and output. Whereas a negative motivation will lead to decreased level of performance. Therefore, in order to optimally utilize human resources of the organization and to retain the same in the organization, management should make all possible efforts to motivate its employees. Dear students, now we will explain the concept of motivation with the help of few definitions. The first definition given by Dublin states that motivation is the complex of forces starting and keeping a person at work in an organization. The another definition states that a motivation is an inner state that energizes, activates or moves and directs or channels behavior goals. The definitions discussed here draw some inferences about the nature of motivation. Motivation is an inner feeling which energizes a person to work more. Unfulfilled needs or desires of an individual prompt him to do a particular task. A person always strives to fulfill his unsatisfied needs. Therefore, we can conclude that motivation is the process that starts with the deficiency of needs. The deficiency of needs activates the behavior of an individual towards achievement of the goal or achievement of the need. Now we will discuss importance of motivation. The importance of the concept of motivation in an organizational context is explained by the following points. Motivated employees always search for a better and novel ways of doing their tasks. When employees seek new ways of doing the things, they usually find them. Motivated employees are more conscious for quality of their work. Such employees contribute a lot in building image of the company amongst the customers as well as the society. Motivated employees are more productive than other employees. All organizations need human resources in addition to non-human resources in order to achieve their goals. The concept of motivation is catching attention because it not only motivates the employees to perform better and go beyond their profile, but it also helps in retaining them. Motivation is a highly complex phenomena which is affected by 
and affects multiple factors in the organization. In order to understand why people behave in a certain manner in an organization, understanding the concept of motivation is very necessary. Theories of motivation. Theories of motivation can be broadly classified into two categories, content theories and process theories. Now we will discuss content theories of motivation. Content theories of motivation attempt to describe the basic needs and drives that motivate an individual to work more and better. These theories explain the linkage between human needs and their work related behaviors. The content theories postulate that individual needs create worries and anxieties amongst the individuals. Those worries activate the behavior of the person to fulfill the unsatisfied needs. The figure given here elaborates that unsatisfied individual needs leads to anxieties in the individual to perform better and to fulfill their needs. Theorists of content theories suggest that unsatisfied needs activate behavior towards achievement of goals. Monetary rewards and incentive schemes can be used in the organizations as a motivational tool to activate individual needs and to motivate the employees. Maslow's need hierarchy theory, Husberg's two-factor theory, Elderford's ERG theory, and McClelland's achievement theory can be classified as the important content theories. The first content theory we are going to discuss is Maslow's need hierarchy theory. Maslow's need hierarchy theory was given by a famous psychologist, Abraham Maslow. Abraham Maslow's need hierarchy theory of motivation is the most common and simplest theory of motivation. Maslow in his theory summarized that every human being has a different set of needs and unsatisfied needs act as strong motivators. As every individual has many needs, they are arranged in the order of their importance starting from basic needs to the most complex needs. Maslow also gave that individual moves to the advanced level needs only when the basic needs are satisfied. If basic needs are not satisfied, the higher level needs will be postponed. Maslow in his theory has proposed five basic needs. He also proposed that human beings tend to satisfy them in the order of their hierarchy. Maslow states that a satisfied need does not act as a motivator, only unsatisfied need continue to motivate a human being. Physiological and safety needs are finite in nature but higher level needs are infinite in nature. Maslow also proposed that various levels of needs are overlapping. We can see the hierarchy of needs given by the Maslow in the figure. The first level of Maslow's hierarchy is physiological needs. Second level of needs given by Maslow is safety needs. Third level of needs is social needs which is followed by self-esteem needs and self-actualization needs. Now we will discuss first level of needs as given by Maslow's need hierarchy theory. Physiological needs. These needs include the most basic and obvious needs for survival of human beings. These are the most powerful needs which motivate an individual till they are satisfied. The need for food, need for water, need for oxygen, sleep, shelter, air and etc. may be categorized as 
physiological needs. These category of needs represent the need for basic necessities of life which are indispensable for the biological maintenance of the human being. If any of these physiological needs is unsatisfied, the individual will primarily strive to satisfy that particular need and will forget about the other higher level needs. For example, a hungry person will never seek any luxury of life or dream of building a new world until his need for food is fulfilled. In the organizational context, employees need for salary and basic working conditions represent his physiological needs. Second level of needs is safety needs. Safety needs are next in the hierarchy of needs given by Abraham Maslow. Once the basic needs of an individual are satisfied, he will strive for fulfillment of second level of needs which are popularly known as safety or security needs. Safety needs here emphasize upon an assurance of continuity of job, security of source of income, provision for the old age, insurance, prediction of environmental factors surrounding an individual. In an organizational context, safety needs are represented by job security, salary hike, safe working conditions and unionizations etc. The third category of needs given by Maslow's hierarchy theory is social needs. Social needs are at the third level of need hierarchy. When physiological and safety needs of a human being are met, he starts putting efforts to satisfy his social needs. These needs represent the need for love, affection, friendship, membership in groups, social acceptance, etc. In an organizational context, Social needs are fulfilled by participation in a work group, team and friendly supervision etc. Fourth category of needs is self-esteem needs. These needs are concerned with self-respect, self-confidence, recognition, appreciation, prestige and power. These needs give a sense of self-worth and ego satisfaction. In an organizational context, esteem needs are usually satisfied by the designation of the job, recognition by the leader, challenging work, responsibility profile, performance feedback and participation in the process of decision making. The last category of needs is self-actualization needs. Self-actualization needs are at the top of the hierarchy of needs. These needs represent the need to be what a person is capable of becoming. This category of need constitutes an individual's mission of his life. An individual who has satisfied all levels of his needs tries to fully utilize his talent, potential, skills and capacities. This need signifies a person's desire of personal achievement. The sense of personal achievement leads to the sense of psychological satisfaction. In an organizational context, self-actualization needs are categorized as need to excel in one's job and career, successfully managing a unit, a plant, etc. Critical Analysis of Maslow's Theory Maslow's need hierarchy theory was widely accepted on following grounds. This theory is very simple and is very easy to understand. Secondly, this theory helps the managers in understanding how to motivate their employees. The model given by Abraham Maslow helps the managers to identify varied needs of employees, recognizing the fact that 
every individual has different needs and thereby offering rewards to satisfy particular needs this theory helps in explaining interpersonal and intrapersonal variations in human behavior the theory suggests that human behavior changes with the change of needs despite of its simplicity and other advantages maslow's theory was criticized on few grounds now we will discuss limitations of maslow's theory some researchers have proved that there is no hierarchy of needs as suggested by abraham maslow some people may be deprived of lower level needs but they may be motivated for higher levels of needs mahatma gandhi is a renowned example of this likewise the people who are motivated for higher order of needs cannot forget about their need for food the another limitation of maslow's theory is assuming that the hierarchy of need exists the hierarchy is different in different countries not only in different countries but the hierarchy is also different amongst the people within a country itself another limitation of maslow's theory is need and satisfaction of need is purely a psychological phenomena and some people especially illiterate people are not able to distinct between the need and satisfaction of needs they may not be even aware about their needs another limitation is this theory is also criticized on the grounds that managers will never find enough time to leisurely diagnose the level of need of every employee of the organizations therefore we can say that maslow's theory though it seems to be simple but is not so simple to apply that theory in the workplace the second theory is hasberg's motivation hygiene theory this theory was given by frederick hasberg in late 1950s and early 1960s frederick hasberg established the motivation hygiene theory which is popularly known as two factor theory of motivation hasberg and his associates conducted a survey of 200 engineers and accountants hasberg suggested that there are certain factors which tend to provide satisfaction to the employees and on the other hand there are certain factors which are related to job dissatisfaction he categorized these factors into two categories maintenance or hygiene factors and motivational factors hygiene factors hygiene factors given by frederick hasberg states that there are certain factors which do not motivate people they just prevent job dissatisfaction if these factors are not there on the job they will lead to the sense of dissatisfaction amongst the employees but the presence of these factors will not satisfy them in other words we can say that these factors do not act as a motivator they don't provide any motivation to the employees but certainly they eliminate the sense of dissatisfaction these factors are also known as dissatisfiers and maintenance factors the second category is motivational factors motivational factors are intrinsic factors these factors are related to the job satisfaction and are also known as motivators satisfiers and job content factors these factors provide a sense of satisfaction among the employees and increase the level of performance by motivating them any increase in these factors lead to increase in the level of satisfaction and motivation among the employees dear students in the exhibit shown here we can see the list of hygiene factors as well as motivational factors hygiene factors which are given by frederick hasberg are company policy and administration supervision 
interpersonal relationships with peers, interpersonal relationship with subordinates, salary, job security, status, personal life and working conditions. Presence of these hygiene factors in the job will not motivate an employee but certainly these factors will avoid the sense of dissatisfaction. Now we will see the list of motivational factors. Achievement, growth, advancement, recognition, responsibility and work itself. These set of factors lead to motivation in the employees. According to Herzberg, satisfaction and dissatisfaction are not opposite poles of same dimensions but they are two separate dimensions their self. Satisfaction is the result of motivators and dissatisfaction is the result of hygiene factors. In order to motivate the employees, managers must take into account both hygiene factors and motivational factors. Hygiene factors will reduce the sense of dissatisfaction amongst the employees and motivational factors will provide the sense of satisfaction to the employees. Now we will critically analyze Herzberg's theory. This theory was appreciated on the grounds that this theory draws attention towards the job factors which are usually overlooked when it comes to motivate the employees. However, the theory also has some limitations. This theory followed the methodology for carrying out a survey. The methodology was limited to engineers and accountants only. Moreover, respondents were asked to narrate the factors which they like about the job and which they dislike about the job. And it is a common practice that when things go well, people take credit of it. And on the other hand, they put blame on the extrinsic factors for their failure. The theory largely provides the explanation of job satisfaction. It is not really a theory of motivation. This theory did not take into consideration the impact of situational variables on the level of motivation. The two factors given by Herzberg namely hygiene factors and motivation factors are not actually distinct. They both contribute to job satisfaction and dissatisfaction. The third theory of motivation is given by Elderfer. This theory is commonly known as Elderfer's ERG theory. This theory is the revised version of Maslow's need hierarchy theory as he condensed the five needs given by the Maslow into three needs. The E, R and G of ERG theory stand for existence, relatedness and growth. These are the three sets of needs defined by Elderfer. Existence needs. Existence needs represent the basic needs of human beings for their existence and survival. This set of needs combine the physiological and safety needs of Maslow's hierarchy. Relatedness needs. The second category of needs given by ERG theory is relatedness needs. These needs are comprised of social and self-esteem needs of Maslow's hierarchy model. These needs represent the desire of human beings to maintain interpersonal relationships and social interactions. The last category of needs given by the ERG theory is growth needs. Growth needs are very similar to Maslow's self-actualization needs. These needs represent an individual's intrinsic desire for personal development, achievement and utilizing one's full potential in the existing work environment. Apart from the similarities between Maslow's theory of need hierarchy and Elderfer's theory, this theory is also different from Maslow's theory 
in few aspects. The first difference is, instead of five levels of needs, Elderfer gave only three sets of needs. The second difference is, Maslow's theory advocated the rigid and step-by-step -step progression of needs, whereas Elderfer's theory assumed that more than one need may be operative at the same time. Maslow's theory assumed that an individual will move to the next level of needs only when the previous needs are fully satisfied, whereas Elderfer counters that when a higher level of need is frustrated, individuals desire to increase lower level need takes place. In other words, we can say that if an individual is not able to satisfy the higher level of needs, he will increase his desire and efforts to increase his previous level need. For example, an individual who is not able to fulfill his social needs will increase his desire for money. This way, Elderfer gave a frustration regression dimension. Critical analysis of Elderfer's theory. This theory was appreciated because the theory was consistent with the fact that every individual is different from each other and therefore their needs are also unique. Variables like age, education, family background, cultural context may also influence one's needs and how much importance an individual gives to one set of needs. Despite of this appreciation received, this theory was criticized on the grounds that this theory does not provide a clear-cut guidelines and assumed that an individual may satisfy any of the three needs first. Therefore, this theory does not guide about how we will determine that which of the three needs is more important for a person and therefore the person will not be able to judge which category of needs he has to fulfill in the first place. The next content theory which we are going to explain is McLellan's Achievement Motivation Theory. This theory was given by David McLellan. David McLellan and his associates gave three sets of needs that motivate human behavior. McLellan assumed that every individual has three needs, but the degree to which these needs motivate an individual vary from individual to individual. The three needs are need for achievement, need for power, and need for affiliation. Now we will discuss each need one by one. First of all is need for achievement. This set of needs represent the desire to excel, achieve given set of standards and become successful. Employees with a high need for achievement derive maximum satisfaction from the success and goal achievement. Need for power. This need represent an individual's desire for power and mold others' behavior as per one's own wish. The employees who have high need for power derive satisfaction from being in the positions of influence and control. They enjoy the positions which provide them the opportunity to exert power and control over others. The third need is need for affiliation. Need for affiliation represents a human being's desire to maintain friendly interpersonal relationships. The people who have high need for affiliation gain satisfaction from participating more in social and interpersonal activities. Critical Analysis of McLellan's Theory McLellan's theory was appreciated because it highlighted the importance of matching 
the individual needs with job variables employees with high need for achievement seek the tasks which are challenging satisfying stimulating and more complex whereas employees with low need for achievement prefer the tasks which offer stability security and predictability so students let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module motivation is a psychological phenomena which generates within an individual an urge to act in a certain manner if an individual has some unfulfilled needs he or she will always be motivated to work more in order to satisfy the same the behavior of such individual will always be directed towards achievements of the needs motivation is an important concept of individual behavior which is receiving considerable attention from various academicians researchers and managers more attention is paid to motivation because motivated employees are more productive quality conscious and adopt the any new technology easily and faster the concept of motivation can be better understood by theories of motivation among the content theories of motivation we have discussed maslow's need hierarchy theory hasberg's two factor theory elders elderfors erg theory and maclellan's achievement theory in this module maslow suggested that there are five sets of needs which are arranged in the order of their importance starting from most basic need to most complex needs hasberg categorized factors influencing motivation of an individual into two categories maintenance factors and hygiene factors alderfer condensed the five needs given by maslow into three needs need for existence need for relatedness and need for growth maclellan gave three sets of needs that motivate human behavior these three needs are need for achievement need for power and need for affiliation he highlighted the importance of matching individual needs with job variables thank you